Good afternoon, candidates, and welcome to the Park Forum. Right now, we are showing our parks platform. We will start in a few minutes. Okay, it seems like we have technical issues, but my name is Annalise Figueroa Garcia, and I have been a Bronx resident living in the Highbridge neighborhood for 15 years. While the Bronx is known as the Greenest Bureau and has the largest percentage of park acreage of any bureau in New York City, many Bronx residents do not have the access to park nearby or near park spaces inaccessible to them. As part of the Bronx Parks Pick Up, our vision is to provide all Bronxonites access to parks and develop a network of safe connections between existing parks. Additionally, while the Bronx has the most parkland, it doesn't mean that we have funding, staffing resources to properly maintain the park's maintenance. We are hosting this candidate forum to bring attention to equitable funding to parks in the Bronx. Now I'm going to go over the guidelines for the forums. Candidates, please be aware that this is a webinar and your mic will be open so you, so you will be able to mute and unmute yourself. Please be mindful of your time and keep to any rules we have established. The program is a five minutes introduction for each. When I called you, please introduce yourself. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> and um, when I called you, please introduce yourself. I'm sorry. The time manager will use a green car at one minute, a yellow car at 30 seconds, and the red car at 30, uh, 10 Excuse seconds me. reminding. Excuse me, Anna, Annalise. I um, will introduce a translator soon. The second part of the program will be a Q&A from the panel and if time from the public attending of Facebook streaming. You will have a minute to answer. The time manager will use a green screen or car to 30 seconds and red screen at 10 seconds. We have translation to Spanish. Tenemos traducción al español. Por favor, traductora, ayúdenos con las instrucciones. Señora traductora. Sí, gracias. Bueno, mi nombre es Alba Mota. Soy una de las intérpretes del día de hoy. My name is Alba Mota. I'm one of the interpreters for today's uh, uh, forum. Eh, solo quiero dar unos eh, pautas de la, del idioma, del, um, de la justicia del lenguaje. Cuando esté hablando, por favor, hable despacio para poder hablar, uh, para poder interpretarle de una manera más eficiente. También, por favor, hable al micrófono para poder escucharle. También le pedimos que, por favor, hable una persona a la vez. No queremos elegir a quién, uh, a quién interpretar. También queremos reconocer que hay otros idiomas representados en este espacio, aunque no lo podemos interpretar todos, pero queremos también reconocerlo y que estamos también en tierra eh, invadida. Entonces, también queremos reconocer esos idiomas en, en tierra invadida donde estamos ahora mismo paradas y parados. Eh, cuando uh, pongan en la función de interpretación, vas a, si estás en una computadora vas a ver un globito, le vas a dar ese globito, elegir el idioma en que quieres escuchar y luego le va a, dejar, le va a decir okay, eh, listo, ok, o listo, o como sea, pero tienes que elegir y uh, poner en, sil en, en silencio el audio original para que no escuche dos voces a la misma vez, pero nada más escuche la del intérprete. Um, good afternoon, my name is Alba, I'm one of the interpreters along with Carly, and I just want to uh, provide some language justice protocol that we use to make interpretation more efficient. A couple of them are, when you are um, speaking, please speak slowly, spread the words so we can catch up with you, 
and do the interpretation more efficiently. Also speaking to the mic so we can hear what you're saying. Also, please keep it one person at a time while we say one mic. That one is very important because we don't want to choose which language voice to interpret over the other. We also acknowledge and recognize says that the, we recognize that there are all other languages represented here, even though we're not able to interpret all of them. We also want to acknowledge and that we are in taking land, taking uh, land that was taken, and we also want to acknowledge that as well. Um, it, once the uh, interpretation feature gets turned on, there's going to be a glove underneath your screen, and you're going to click on it. Choose the language you want to hear the interpretation to. If you speak Spanish, you will select Spanish. If you want to hear it in English, then you press English and press done. If you don't press that, you won't be able to select the language. Um, I just want to make um, what Annalise said uh, in English. I just want to make a, a, a quick uh, review because I know people were asking for it. So uh, if it's okay with the time person that I said, because I don't know if you're going to repeat it again. The instructions were given just in English. I just want to check in if I could do there a little what you said in, in Spanish. There's time for that. Hi, manager, do we have time for that interpretation? Because it didn't happen at the beginning. You're right. Yes. Quickly, please. Okay. Okay. Bienvenido al foro de candidatos uh, de los presidentes del condado de Bronx. Eh, del condado, uh, perdón, bienvenido al foro de candidatos del condado de Bronx, el Bronx, los parques del Bronx alzan su voz. Tenga en cuenta que este es un seminario web y su micrófono estará abierto para que no pueda desactivarlo en silencio. Tenga en cuenta que su tiempo, tenga el tiempo, eh, tenga en cuenta el tiempo y cumpla con las demás reglas que se hayan establecido. El programa es una introducción de cinco minutos para cada candidato. Y se la va a llamar en orden. Preséntese y hable sobre los temas relacionados al, a, lo, a lo que se refiere a los parques. El administrador del tiempo utilizará un papel verde, amarillo, rojo durante un minuto, 30 segundos o 10 segundos restantes. La segunda parte del, del programa se, será de preguntas y respuestas de un panel. Y si, el, y si en el momento eh, también el público asistente de que está transmitiendo por, eh, por Facebook también puede participar en esto. Tendrá un total de un minuto para responder. El administrador del tiempo utilizará otra vez un papel verde, rojo, durante 30 segundos y cuando quedan también 10 segundos. El tiempo es muy escaso, así que por, no se ceda del tiempo. Las reglas del chat. Participe en el chat eh, de Facebook. Coloque la bienvenida de al foro. Eh, Bienvenido al foro de candidatos de los parques del Bronx alzan su voz. Por favor, tomen el tiempo para ingresar su nombre completo, el, eh, correo electrónico y si, y si pertenece a algún grupo comunitario. También uh, hay, eh, se, se, aquí se establecen contactos, sea respetuoso y no participe en ataques personales. Deberá referirse a las discusiones de hoy sobre, el, 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 sobre este, este espacio. También para los candidatos, si tiene alguna pregunta para los candidatos, utilice las preguntas y respuestas, la parte de ese Q&A, para así ir a hacer sus preguntas. Estas preguntas serán monitoreadas dependiendo del tiempo que tengan, se presentarán a todos los candidatos. Puede acceder a la función de preguntas y respuestas donde le dije en la pantalla abajo. Um, y, puede, um, uh, sí, y recuerde que las preguntas que los candidatos vayan a eh, sean preguntas que ellos puedan responder, las publicaciones ofensivas pueden eliminarse y a las personas que publiquen estos elementos pueden ser eliminados del grupo discretamente uh, por discreción del moderador del chat. Okay. Thank you so much, Alda. And we have another interpreter, but we have to continue with the program because our time is very short. So quick before candidates, thank you so much. But before we have to say the instructions of the chat in English, I will go quickly. Because Joseph Sanchez will be moderating the Zoom chat. And you can also uh, put your questions in Facebook Live and in Zoom. And please, if you have, if you please put your name and if you are from any other organization, please put your organization. Someone needs to mute themselves, please. And thank you. And please, this is for networking. So please don't be offensive. We reserve the right to remove any offensive remarks in the chat. 
And this chat is four part questions only. Thank you, candidates. So right now we're gonna go to Natalia Fernandez with her five minutes introduction. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Saturday. Um, in a way, good thing that we don't have to be out in the rain, but our parks are getting a nice good drink. Um, I'm Assemblywoman Natalia Fernandez. I represent the 80th Assembly District in the Northeast Bronx. That is a neighbor and home to some of the biggest and beautiful park, most beautiful parks in the Bronx. Um, my district has Pelham Parkway and Mashalu Parkway, and I am neighbor to Pelham Bay Park and Van Cortland Park. And this conversation is always so refreshing and welcoming every year. And I thank everyone for putting this together because this conversation is important, especially to the borough of the Bronx. We are the greenest borough. We said that here. We know we got the most park space. We need, and it's almost so obvious to say that we need a higher park budget. There's more ground to cover. There's more maintenance. Our Bronx residents utilize our parks for uh, recreation, a sanctuary, a, pl a, pay a place to be with family and to really find that peace in, in our borough. And now during COVID, we've seen how important our park space is. I myself, during the high po points of quarantine have taken the free time that you know I did have to explore our beautiful parks here all over the borough. and. The appreciation, as far as I've seen, has only grown in most recent years and most recent months and to this day. And I thank this uh, collaborative right here to keep this uh, conversation alive and going. But we must keep it alive and going because our health is at risk for it. Our parks um, help keep our really the air clean. We know that trees purify our air. So it's important to protect our green spaces and make sure, oh, slow down, okay. We know it's important to protect our green spaces here, but how? Funding brings us more maintenance workers. As much as our parks are used, because a lot of the time they are our backyards, they are our neighbors' backyards. We need to make sure that the follow-up and the education to our community members about why our park spaces are so important and the need to help protect it is, is alive and well. Um, when we talk about, you know, beautifying our neighborhoods, our community needs to be a part of that. Our community loves to be a part of that. I myself have great community associations that I work with, including Friends of Mashaloo Parkland, Friends of Mashaloo Parkway. Um, I've been happy to support their efforts because sometimes we see that Parks Department isn't able to do all the things that we know needs to be done, like extra plant bulbing, uh, bulbing uh, park cleanups, um, education about why certain plants are needed in our parkways. Um, just Today, I saw a video about a berry tree that is one of the, the plants that can purify the air up to like 20%. These are things that we should be incorporating in our park spaces to help the issues that affect the Bronx, like air quality. As borough president, I absolutely will be a loud voice for our parks because we are the greenest borough. And in that same sense and context, we should be investing in all green infrastructure and being very socially conscious of every decision that we make and how it will affect our public green spaces. Sorry, again, slow down. Um, but it's important to have this investment and this knowledge and to support the love for our parks because between our playgrounds and our community gardens and really educating on the importance of having that knowledge of environmental justice and having that knowledge about you know, what the park, our park spaces mean to communities is something we must teach in each and every day in our school curriculums, um, incorporating urban farming into our curriculums, making sure that people understand that there is ways to be sustainable outside of depending on, on government and everyone to do things for you. But I welcome the questions here today. I thank you again for this conversation. Um, and yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Natalia. And before we go to our council member, Ms. Vanessa Gibson, I have to say that if you, uh, if you have any questions that you want to post to the candidates, please put it in the Q&A section. The Q&A section can be reached. I will tell you right now. <laughs> the Q&A session will be, uh, you will find Will be um, the Q and A function is at the bottom of your screen. If you don't see the Q and A, tap the three dots to find it. Remember, questions for candidates go to the Q and A. Thank you so much, Council Member Vanessa Gibson. Please introduce yourself. Good afternoon, Annalise. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much to Bronx Park Speak Up to each and every one of you. Blessed Saturday. I hope and pray that all of you are healthy, well, and safe. 
and your families are well. We are living in some challenging times and I am reminded that our work is not done. We have had a global pandemic that has hit this country almost a year ago and we have to continue to do the work that is necessary to uplift our children, our families and really provide so much opportunity and investment in this great borough. I am council member Vanessa L. Gibson. I am thankful that for the past eight years, I've had the honor of serving as council member of district 16 in the West Bronx, the communities of Claremont, Claremont Village, Concourse, Concourse Village, High Bridge, Mount Eden, Morris Heights and Morrisania. We are proud to represent the High Bridge, the oldest standing walking bridge in the country uh, that opened up right here in our great borough. I am proud to represent the only state park in Bronx County, which is Roberto Clemente State Park. I'm also very proud to represent Claremont Park, McCombs Dam Park, Grant Park, Mullally Park, Ridge Park, Corporal Fisher, uh, as well as working closely with Council Member Ayala in addressing Joyce Kilmer and France Siegel, my neighboring parks that we never forget about. And during my time at the city council, I have supported efforts council initiatives like park equity that will bring access and opportunity to our parks, our advocates groups, our friends of parks groups, and all of our community partners. And I thank all of you during this pandemic, you have hosted a number of cleanup events because all of you recognize that unfortunately due to the pandemic and a serious fiscal crisis of $9 billion deficit, we cut the parks department's budget heavily. We did not invest in seasonal workers, gardeners, playground associates, parks workers, and PEP officers. And that had a real impact on our quality of life. Our parks, open spaces, and playgrounds are our greatest assets and our greatest treasures. And as it has been said, we have to continue to invest. We have to continue to focus on health and wellness and self-help. Uh, and, and making sure that we deal with mental health and therapeutic services and really understand the strong correlation between parks, open spaces and quality of life, the reduction of asthma rates and truck traffic and pollution and noise and unstable housing. All of those things are so very prevalent in our borough. Yes, we are one of the greenest boroughs in the city, but what does it mean if we don't invest in our parks and playgrounds? As council member, I've had the honor of working with my colleagues in the delegation and through the Jerome neighborhood plan, we have invested to date $25 million for a brand new Grant Park in our district, $4.6 million for a brand new bridge playground, which I'm so excited about. We've invested $4 million for a brand new Corporal Fisher playground, all in High Bridge at Community Board 4, because the residents demanded that. As we build housing, as we look at the increase in population, we have to look at the impact on our treasures and assets, our school system, the burden on our parkland. And during the pandemic, when a lot of families were in their homes, children learning remotely, our parks were utilized like never before. So yes, education and outreach, critical and making sure that we allow people a space to use parks, but we also make sure that we curb behavior. We look at recycling programs and composting programs and making sure that we reduce food waste because there is a strong correlation between our open spaces and parks and food insecurity and what we have been experiencing at a local level. So yes, farming, urban agriculture, community gardens, our green thumbs, growing our own fruits and vegetables right in our neighborhoods. Shout out to all the volunteers that really spend so much time growing fruits and vegetables. That is what the Bronx is all about. And I assure you and am committed as a candidate for Bronx Borough President, I will take all of that experience, eight years being in the city council, four years being in the state assembly and apply all of that to the Bronx Borough President's office. The borough president has access to millions of dollars in capital funding. And so we can't just talk about it, we have to be about it. We have to invest dollars where our commitment is and build more parks, renovate our parks. I want every park to have a comfort station, a playground, a basketball field, and as well as a soccer field. I think we have to look beyond some of the traditional sports like basketball and baseball and look at other opportunities like lacrosse, like karate, so many things that we're doing in our communities and all of the CBOs that are providing these services. So I look forward to working with all of you and I thank you 
Bronx Parks for all of your work. I remember this annual event that's normally held at Lehman College, but I'm really grateful that we are joining together here today. And I look forward to working with you in my final year in the city council and as your candidate for Bronx Borough President. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Vanessa Gibson, council member. Now we are going to the Q&A questions. Please, before we start going on that, we encourage our public attending this event to put your questions either in Facebook or here in the Q&A section. Now, I have the pleasure to introduce Dart Westfold. He is, he is going to help us and he's going to begin with the Q&A session from our panelists. Dart. Thank you very much. The first question concerns the practice of requiring public-private partnerships who are taking the lead on our biggest parks and our community gardens to indemnify the city for activities in the park. As borough president, how would you handle this? Um, we have to closely monitor uh, the work that they're they're doing and not doing. Uh, for our bigger parks, we, we know we need that extra assistance. So utilizing the partnerships and investors that we have here already is something that could be used um, for the greater benefit. But at the same time, we don't want them to throw in their ideas or their uh, interest into what our public spaces should be. So that transparency is important when it comes to what the borough president's office can allow, won't allow, will allow, and what the people actually want and need. So conversations need to be frequent. There needs to be constant check-ins to make sure that what is happening and that partnership and investment in there is, is happening for the benefit and the only the interest of our park goers. Thank you. I believe that public-private partnerships can be an incredible asset, but it has to be done in a responsible way. As Bronx Borough President, I will have those conversations with many of our private partners, many of our partners in the philanthropy community as well, and look at opportunities at expansion and growth. We understand government cannot do it all, but we are grateful for the incredible work of our parks department. Our borough commissioner, Iris Rodriguez, is amazing. And one thing I say about Iris, and we all agree, she is out there with us in the trenches, cleaning up parks and providing you know, so much because we realize that we are all in this together. Public-private partnerships have the abil ability to provide the investment that is needed, but it has to be done with some sort of a tangible agreement. I am not afraid of MOUs and memorandums of understanding and so many community benefits agreements that many of us are used to with some of the larger projects that we've embarked on over the years in the Bronx. I think it has to be tailored to be beneficial primarily to all of the residents in that local community, working with the local community board, working with park advocates and stakeholders, and so many of our local CBOs, and putting together our priorities as we have these conversations. Being the Bronx Borough President allows me that space and that platform to have conversations and negotiate. But at the end of the day, while I may be the leader, I am not leading this alone. This is a part of a conversation and we are a village and we are partners and we are all sitting at the table because we do have to make sure that private interest does not you know, dissuade us from doing this work and certainly doesn't conflict with our values and what we fundamentally believe we want to see. Understand that all of the work that we're doing, these investments in our parks, open spaces, access to waterfront. This is about building a sustainable Bronx, a, a Bronx that it has longevity, that builds opportunity, that builds local jobs with all of the sustainability projects we're talking about. But equally as important, it creates the next generation of leaders. So they understand that you have to look within at our treasures, at our beautiful parks and open spaces, and make sure that you invest in those just as you invest in everything else that's important to us in the Bronx. Thank you. The second question is, according to the city charter, as Bronx Borough President, you would be responsible for reviewing the expense and capital budgets. How will you use this process to increase program and maintenance staffing for parks? In the same order. Um, well, that information is everything we need to show what we need to help support our parks. The numbers don't lie, as everyone says, and if we're showing that we are getting constant requests for more uh, maintenance staff or, or 
or attention to areas, we need to see how much that costs. And in analyzing this and creating, I guess, a budget of what everything we do need and are currently utilizing in a year will be the information to go forth and use this as our argument. This is what our parks need. This is how much it, it costs to maintain, but understanding uh, seasonal shifts and seasonal um, increases in attendance these things change and we need to make sure that we have the support and the numbers there showing it to properly uh, give the resources to our parks and park goers. That's a great question. We're actually going through that right now in the city council. Our budget hearings start on Tuesday for the FY22 budget. And last Thursday, the borough board met of which every council member in the delegation has a representative as well as all of our community board chairpersons all 12 community boards here in the Bronx. And they put forth their recommendations from a community board level. It goes to borough board for a vote and the borough president considers all of those different priorities from community boards one through 12 and formulates the borough president's recommendations on the fiscal year's budget priorities, both from a discretionary perspective as well as capital. So as borough president, I am very familiar with the city's budget process of which I've been a part of for the past eight years. It is very critical to have a voice from the borough because you have to work closely with your delegation as well as the speaker and the Office of Management and Budget. There are big ticket items like the renovation of Orchard Beach, uh, like the Universal Hip Hop Museum, the Bronx Children's Museum, a number of housing projects that we've passed over the last several years. Those are priority. But when it comes to parks, absolutely. We're talking about multi-million dollar projects that span over multiple fiscal years. We've been able to make incredible investments already in phase one of Orchard Beach. And now we're going to phase two because we've been able to work closely with our partners in the state and the federal government to get a number of support. But as borough president, the voices of the community board is so critically important. Local parks in their districts that have not gotten attention, that need the infusion of capital dollars is important. Uh, one other program that I will always fight for, and I have been, is $10 million for 100 parks workers that we've been able to maintain year after year in the city council. It is a city council add-on that we fight for every year and that supplements the additional park workers that are already on staff. But that's not enough. We know we need more playground associates, more seasonal workers, more gardeners. We need to look at SYEP and make sure that we can uh, develop and recruit young people to work in our parks as a summer youth job because we have to recruit young people and allow them the space to be in their own communities, making sure their parks are maintained. All of that is critically important, but once again, the voice of the community board and their leadership is critical. And as borough president, I will make sure that all of their recommendations are considered as I formulate my priorities as borough president. Thank you. For the next pair of questions, I'd like to turn the microphone over to Joyce Hoagie. Joyce. Thank you, Dart. And thank you candidates for attending our forum today. Needless to say, this is a very unusual Bronx Park speak up. We've never done this before. So we are, everybody is, is sort of jumping in head first. My questions have really been um, already been answered both in your introductions and in uh, Dart's questions to you. But I have a particular concern about um, the usage of our parks. We live in an area that, is, as you know, Vanessa, lots of families, they use the parks as their front yards and their backyards. Everybody primes for the holidays to come or the warm weather to come when people want to get out and barbecue. We do not have sufficient space for families in this borough to practice that. How would you resolve an issue such as that where you elected borough president? 
Vanessa, you go. And Elise, do you want me to start? Or do you, do you want the assembly woman? Vanessa. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Joyce, for your question and thank you for everything you've done in the community and certainly on behalf of Friends of Four Parks Alliance, uh, namely your backyard of Joyce Kilmer Park. And I know when you speak of these issues, it's really about Joyce Kilmer and Mullally Park, North and South, because these parks, while they're small in acreage, they have a lot of usage. And during the pandemic, families were using them for a multitude of events and graduations and birthdays and celebrations. I saw so much going on. And I realized it's because families were holed up in their apartments for months trying to be safe during a pandemic. So number one, the answer to that is looking at city owned parcels of land and building out brand new parks, like what we're doing with Grant Park. We are closing, we've demapped Grant Avenue between 169 and 170. We're going to combine Grant Park today, Morris 170, 169 and Grant, and that's gonna be a whole big park, potentially an amphitheater, a dog run. We're going to preserve the Dred Scott Bird Sanctuary, and we'll have space for the students at CS88 on Sheridan Avenue who have no gymnasium and no outdoor space right now. So number one, that's, that's a good way to start to look at underutilized city-owned land that's ripe for development in terms of building out brand new parks. We're getting, as I mentioned, Bridge Playground is brand new. We did a park alienation thanks to Assemblywoman Joyner and Senator Serrano. And then we're also getting a brand new Corporal Fisher. And these sites were underutilized, owned by the city, no development, and we've provided the funding to move that forward. In addition, I think we should have a conversation now with the Department of Ed and the Parks Department because a lot of playgrounds on DOE sites are only open and available for the students of that school during school hours. But in communities like ours where you have a high rate of multi-family dwelling buildings, a lot of families and children living literally sometimes on top of each other and not a lot of open outdoor space, not every family is willing to travel to Orchard Beach or you know parts of, of the East and, and Pelham Bay. They just can't get there. So they have to look at opportunities in their own neighborhoods. But we should have a conversation with the Department of Ed. We have a new chancellor now and look at opportunities where we can open up those playgrounds during the non-school hours for local community residents. I mean, there's a lot of overlap. The same students we're talking about that go to those schools also live in the communities too. And so that could be an opportunity because we don't often build brand new parks as we should, but I do think the administration has to look at a mechanism that looks at growth of population you know, per 100,000 residents as we do. As we build housing, there should be schools and parks and playgrounds that go hand in hand with that. So we can deal with the density in parts of our borough. We can look at the underutilized city owned land and we can really look at opportunities to build out brand new parks, but also look at some of our existing playgrounds right now that are not utilized by the local community and open up that access for greater opportunities for local families and children. Um, I do want to agree on the point that Council Member Gibson said about utilizing the parks and making sure that they're open uh, for the rest of the community. But a part of that is going back to making sure we have the funding and maintenance available and staff available. Every region of parks is represented under the control and management of a manager. They have a select a number of staff members. And like in my areas, Loretto Park closed one day at 3 p.m. and everybody was up in arms. Why is the park closed at 3 p.m.? And the answer was because they didn't have the staff to get there in time at sundown to close the park. And thus they had to close it earlier. If we had staff that can address their number of parks in their region to make sure that we're closing it at correct times at sundown, um, at dusk, uh, 9 p.m., whichever it is, but to make sure that the public has access to the park space for the hours it's supposed to be open. Um, as far as barbecuing, Pelham Parkway, Marshall Parkway, Pelham Bay Park, uh, this is an issue that has been going on for a number of years, and we've increased signage, we've you know, increased advocacy to teach our neighbors that barbecuing in, in unsafe and undesignated places in our parks is dangerous for our trees. The smoke, the, the, the soot, the, the, the coal, that's not good for our parks, it's not good for the ground, it's not good for our plants. So educating that in a broader spectrum 
whether we got to tell it to our kids in school so they could tell their parents to be aware, um, extending outreach through our community boards and the community groups so they can help educate us, um, but also figuring out where we can expand designated areas. Right now, only Pelham Bay Park and Van Cortlandt Park um, have designated barbecue areas, but we see and we talk about it right here that our parks are basically our backyards. This is our space for recreation and you can't stop human nature that wants to be out there spending the day with their family and enjoying it, but you have to be responsible when you enjoy it. So instead of always sending uh, a, you know, an NYPD officer, we need to have our park officers available uh, monitoring, you know, going through our parks to kindly educate our people that, you know, you can't barbecue here, there's designated areas there. And like I said, the designated areas are still very far away. Bronx River Park right here in Allerton and Bronx Park East is a very popular spot where people go and barbecue and there's no designated barbecue area. So giving um, the attention to these areas and assessing if it's possible to create clear designated park uh, barbecue spots is something that I think should be explored, um, but also making sure that it's not hurting the green uh, nature around it. Thank you very much. Uh, our common theme here is the cutting of staff. We understand that park staffing is gonna be cut once again this year. And I know that there's some movement in the city council to restore some funding, but will either of you support raising the staff levels to 5,000? Because this really, well, you know, I don't have to tell you that this is a huge borough, lots of park space and um, asking PEP officers to go around and monitor. We don't have PEP officers. There's so few of them in this borough. So would you support raising the staff levels to 5,000? Uh, that's- Absolutely. Yep, yes. I got you, Joyce. Absolutely. And let me say last year's adopted budget, there was an $84 million cut to the Parks Department. So in the council, we are advocating, we are optimistic about this federal money, you know, the stimulus plan, $1.9 trillion, the infusion of billions of dollars to the state's budget to deal with their deficit as well as the city. Um, I am going into this budget process attempting to prioritize all of the cuts that we imposed last year. Before we look at enhancements, we have to look at restoration of services. The 100 parks workers, that 10 million, that's going to stay. We have to look at the PEP officers. We cut parks rangers last year, which is not acceptable. But generally speaking, there is an inequity in the system and Commissioner Rodriguez Rosa and her team at the borough do the very best they can. But the budget that goes to the city's parks department and actually is given to the boroughs itself does not reflect the green space that the borough has. So you would think having Pelham Park and all Pelham Bay Park and all of these large parks that it would give us more support, it does not. So that's number one, we have to deal with that fundamental dis you know, disparity and address that at the budget level. Um, I am all for adding more, 5,000 if that's the number, absolutely I aim high because we need it all. Uh, we expect parks to be heavily used this year again. And I, I definitely want to look at some of our seasonal workers. Again, SYEP, I wanna get opportunities for our young people. I want to continue to add to the staff. But I also wanna have ambassadors. During last summer, during the pandemic, we worked with anti-gun violence organizations and a part of the SYEP program was related to youth ambassadors going into parks, reminding park goers of picking up behind themselves, using the trash receptacles, the big bellies and others in our parks, as well as wearing face masks. I think that will continue this summer. So I am a fan of encouraging young people as a way to build responsibility, to get a job, let's use them. They can also supplement the work that the parks department is doing too. So I think we have to be creative and, and yes, relying on the parks department and its staff is important, but I also think we have to look at other outlets as well. We also need more money, Joyce, and many of you will agree for our community groups. I wanna be able to give more funding to many of the groups on the ground, like the Bronx is blooming, I love the Bronx, New York Restoration Project, Sustainable South Bronx. These are all groups I've funded from my discretionary, 
but I don't have enough money. I need more money. <laughs> so I'm hoping that this year with the infusion of federal dollars, we can give more money to Friends of Four Parks Alliance and others. So you all can do more cleanups. You can do more education for park goers and we can develop more partnerships with our local schools because we want to get young people interested in maintaining their parks right in their neighborhood. So I'm all for it. Yes, uh, as a uh, answer to your question and I will do what I can this budget year. Thank you very much. Assemblywoman. Um, absolutely, as I've said in some of my, my past answers, recent answers here, we need the help, we need the maintenance, we need park staff on the grounds to help address the issues that we all explain now. And the park budget, as far as I've been involved in the last decade in government, has continuously been decreasing. So the $84 million cut was a huge hit to an already hurting issue that has not been I think strongly addressed by our administration and city council members. So with the federal dollars, with, with the state that is fighting, I am in the state right now fighting to make sure we are increasing uh, revenue to give, you know, to the city, to, to our state parks department, to make sure we're putting in the proper resources and support needed to help keep our parks maintained. But this is really for both of you. Uh, the parks department maintains over 28,000 acres here in the Bronx. Its budget is less than 5% of the city's budget. We have been advocating for years to at least bring it up to 1%. How would you work toward getting that essential service to be given the necessary funding? And how do we, how do we switch that, that dynamic? It's so out of whack. I agree with you, Joyce, and it has been like that for some time. We've been able to get some success in past budgets. We've had a lot of park advocates and different organizations come and testify at City Hall and really advocate to the mayor to put the budget in the preliminary, but if not, during the budget process to make sure it could be in the executive budget that comes out every April. Uh, but we have to continue to do more of that. I think it's important to raise our voices and as borough president, we'll make sure that that is a top priority. I think a budget is always reflective of one's values. And if you look at the parks budget being less than 10% of the overall 95 you know, billion dollar city's budget, you know, that's a, a drop in the bucket and it speaks volumes to our priority on open space and our parks. And I think that has to change. The only way that changes is with strong advocacy with leaders and residents and so many others that are stepping up that are signing petitions, getting in our faces as council members, talking to the mayor and, you know, and really supporting the work of the parks department. Um, they are unrecognized most times and they're not, you know, showing the appreciation that they really deserve uh, all year round, not just during the summer and spring season, but the work they do all year round. Maintenance and operations is far less than it should be. We have to recognize the importance as we build out new parks. We have to make sure that the park budget for maintenance and operation should go with that particular park. What we could offer as a possibility is some sort of a formula that looks at the size of that park and the acreage and, and develop some sort of a mechanism by which you would get a certain amount of staff per size of the park. That could be a way to start because I'm really not sure how the parks department does it today. It seems very general with no specificity on sizable parks versus smaller parks. And so I want to hear those ideas and as borough president will certainly be a champion during the budget process. I'll go and testify myself to make sure that, you know, OMB, the parks department, as well as the administration hears us on future budgets. Thank you very much. And I, I appreciate both of your input. And I realize that these are also questions that uh, we will present to our mayoral candidates also. Thank you, Joyce. I think we have to go to the well, Q&A <laughs> I think we have to go to the Q&A questions. Um, thank you so much, Joy, for helping us with this part. And I want to thank you, candidates, for this Q&A questions part. And now we have Dr. Fanusi that will help us with the Q&A questions from the public. Thank, Thank you, you Dar. Thank you. Um, and candidates, I'll be um, looking at our questions from our audience that they've been fantastic. I want to thank you for your um, questions, answers to questions for the panelists. So um, 
I will also ask you to keep your um, answers to about one minute each so I can ask as many questions as we can. Um, so the first question has to do with the um, economic development and development in affordable housing that's going on around the Bronx. Um, as borough president, you are a leader and promoter of economic um, development for our borough. But um, residents note that development also often squeezes out parklands or it takes place without parkland or green space. Can you tell us as a candidate, what kinds of development you will policies and um, advocacy you will lead that will enable a developing borough to get its fair share of green space? Um, and um, either candidate, take it. Um, I'll take this one. With every development that we have, we need to make sure it, it's coming with proper uh, services and amenities for the community. So I've said before and on various forums, if we're going to bring in affordable housing, we need to make sure that the community around it can support it with a school to make sure that our children have um, an uncrowded school to attend and proper food resources. But as we're speaking now, green space is very important for the the need of recreation and, and sanctuary and again, education on nature. So when these agreements come, I absolutely will make it a, a demand. We need to see the incorporate, incorporation of green spaces, of protecting green spaces and making sure that the community that is coming there and moving to there um, has that option. Um, but also making sure that the infrastructure is built uh, with resiliency in mind, because as we talk about, you know, being healthy, not 62 and, and our park space being a source of recreation and exercise and our buildings and our infrastructure can help us come out of this not 62, be healthy for us. We need to make sure that our buildings are prepared for weathering, for the climate change to come. Oh, I see my time up. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Ms. Gibson, how will you deal with green space and parks needs with development? Thank you, great question. The only way you can achieve that is by looking at some of the HPD incentives and tax credit programs that drive development, specifically the construction of housing. The only experience I've seen in the council where you're able to get brand new parks and amenities like new schools is through a neighborhood rezoning. When you upzone a community, when you move from an R7 and R8, you look at you know M1 districts and C8, C9, all these different terms. But outside of that, if you're looking at individual housing projects under some of the existing term sheets, which can be changed, you as a developer have to provide uh, outdoor space, if it's terrace, uh, potentially opportunities for community space for the residents of that particular building, right? Not the neighborhood. And so if we're going to have a conversation about individual housing projects that have to provide opportunities for the neighborhood, then we have to stimulate that, whether it's through the RFP process, through the tax credit incentive and the financing. We have to drive this and stimulate it with incentives that encourage developers to look beyond their building and look at the neighborhood. So I would propose that as bar president. Thank you. Um, here's another big picture question. Um, it has to do with the structural changes needed to the New York City budget to enable parks to get its own funding um, and meet these demands for staffing that you've heard about. Um, what has been your thinking about what's wrong with the current uh, uh, a budget structure of the Parks Department, and what measures do you think you can take as borough president to change that? I think the, the issues with the budget structure is that it's too broad. And we've spoken about our specific parks here, Joyce Kilmer, Mashalu, Pelham Parkway, Pelham Bay, and there's different but same activity that happens here. We need to audit and analyze what is the maintenance efforts that have been happening in our specific parks and add that to a proposal to show the detailed amount of funding that would be needed to help maintain these. That report will be, at least for me, brought to the testifying table to show that this is what our parks need, this is what our community uh, needs right now to help have a safe and clean park, and we're demanding it in the budget. Gibson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. I think, again, a budget is a reflection of your values and your priorities. And if we are not investing heavily in parks and open spaces, then that simply means we have to change. I would work as borough president with all of our community boards, all of our parks chairs at every CB and identify what some of our suggestions could be. I am not in the business to wait for the next administration to come up 
with a new formula that's not as broad and that is more definitive and detailed, but I am ready and willing to give suggestions, right? If we have ideas as advocates and leaders, this is our borough, our community, let's come up with suggestions. Now, if it doesn't from, come from the community board level, then let's include our park advocates and our organizations and stakeholders. You don't have to be a part of the community board to have a role in this, but let's look at all stakeholders coming up with ideas that we formulate and put into a plan on how we change the formula so that it recognizes a borough like the Bronx and all the greenery we have and making sure that the percentage that we get from the city parks department is reflective of what we need in the borough. Great. I think I can take two more questions. So um, here's a question. It's everyone knows about the um, hellishly long procurement policy for building a park. Um, it's been much discussion uh, at former speak ups. Um, have you thought about your changes or what you would do to shorten the time between the proposal for a new park or playground and actually shovels in the ground and opening to the people? Well, it's really important to plan because um, you fail to plan, it's a plan to fail. So we need to really set that schedule strict and straightforward of what we want to accomplish in the days between that procurement pr uh, plan, making sure that we're reaching out and confirming participatory, I mean, participating uh, community members and stakeholders to be a part of it as it's happening now and don't let anything slip through the cracks and, and go against the timeline. Excellent, thank you. Ms. Gibson? As a city council, I chair the, the subcommittee on capital. And during that time, we have tried to really streamline the design process. So if you think about a construction of a brand new park, you start with design. That usually takes nine months to a year. And then you put that together. Then you go to the actual bidding process where you entertain bidders that will come in. Then you go to procurement. Then you move forward for construction. That process in itself is almost two and a half years. Not acceptable. So one thing we have to look at is standardizing the design process, expediting it. We have to look at better recruitment of vendors because we are sometimes subjected to the same handful of developers that build parks in New York City. That's unacceptable. We have to look at better recruitment of minority and women owned businesses, MWBE, and we have to find better ways as an administration to streamline this process. Beyond frustrating that as council members, sometimes we get, uh, we, we get awards that are much higher than the allocation and we have to go back and put money into un underfunded projects. So as borough president, I will work with the administration to streamline the design process, look at the bidding process, look at the better recruitment in the industry of those that build parks as well as comfort stations so that the parks department can operate much more efficiently and we can timeline these projects to something that's more meaningful and something that's more realistic. Fantastic. Our last question, everybody, this is a new one, a good one, because uh, we kind of zoom out and think about um, what COVID has taught us about our love of parks. Um, and a question from our attendees today has to do with the kinds of programs and kind of collateral benefits that people get from using parks, especially for those from vulnerable communities facing health. Um, what are your special programs that you think um, the parks can be good homes for and magnets for um, that address the large uh, inequities that people face in terms of health outcomes um, in our borough right now. Um, what kind of project or special programs do you want to promote um, in these hopefully uh, well-staffed parks um, that will be under your administration? Uh, Ms. Fernandez. Uh, I would love to see more activities hosted in the park uh, by parks department. You know, we've had community groups that have done them on their own, Zuma in the park, yoga in the park, uh, but, you know, utilizing the programming that comes out of the Van Cortlandt Nature Center, nature tours, you know, these things can be promoted uh, well, much better than they have been to bring people into their parks right in their backyards, you know, down the street or going to a uh, Van Cortlandt Park, you know, to make the, a day of it. So having these set you know, plans and schedules to encourage uh, a day in the park, I think is something that will certainly get people um, learning more because you're gonna have a guide, you're gonna have uh, the information around you being told to you, but also just creating safe and, and fun activity uh, to spend time on the weekends, uh, getting you active for our seniors, for our children. We can have yoga for all ages, but things like this, I think certainly 
uh, shows that the, the city is wanting your participation, is trying to provide you more uh, recreational activity that is safe, that is easy to do, and that is accessible. Fantastic. Thank you. Ms. Gibson. I love this question. I love activities in the park. I am so active and have been pre-pandemic. So a lot of the events, as Assemblywoman Fernandez mentioned, yes, we should have Zumba, we should have fitness classes, we should have health and wellness events. We should really do everything to stimulate our residents, whether they're older, children, families. We have to get people moving. We have to encourage them to use our parks for so many activities, and we can fund these project projects in the city, you know, not just the city council, but as borough president. Um, I recognize there is a strong correlation between our parks events and reducing high rates of asthma and really reducing a lot of the health disparities that we face. So in addition to Zumba, fitness classes, uh, yoga, I've hosted silent disco, I have family days, I have barbecues, I have movie nights, all of these great events that we did pre-pandemic. And I look forward to having them again because we also want our children to experience the you know the nature and the beauty of our open spaces so i'm a big fan of double dutch i love double dutch and like events like that they're just so great to you know intergenerational programs so i would do that as bronx borough president and certainly will continue a lot of the work i've done excellent thank you for your answers and public thank you for your questions that closes out our q a thank you so much dr panusi I know that we have our Bronx Parks Commissioner, Ms. Iris Rodriguez. Um, I understand Ms. Iris Rodriguez wants to uh, talk to us. Or, uh, am I right? Um, I'm my technical assistant. <laughs> Do we have Ms. Iris Rodriguez? I'm going to work on that right now. Thank you so much. She's promoted to panelists. Okay, so Ms. Iris Rodriguez is our Bronze Parks Commissioner. Please, Ms. Iris, introduce yourself. You're on mute. Okay, hello. Oh, you're still muted. Just muted you. Ms. Rodriguez, okay, thank can you, you Ms. Rodriguez. Me? Okay, hello, and can you hear me? Okay, can you? Okay, terrific. <laughs> Wonderful. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, Robert, Karen, and Nilka, I can't tell you. I mean, if I go through the litany of people that I know here, Joyce and everyone else, and Dart, I can't, I, 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 I would not cease. So I have to say that I am honored and I'm privileged to be a part of this, uh, this forum uh, for the many, many years that I have been a, a part of it. I can't thank you enough. I, I happen to say that in 2020, as you know, we went through this whole uh, pandemic and everything like that, and we were oversubscribed. So many of you here that are in this forum and are, many of our elected officials came out. And I have to say that I think I'm the, the borough that is blessed the most. I think I have amazing, amazing elected officials. Then not only did, did they come out to say hi to the community organizations that volunteered, but they actually rolled up their sleeves, picked up, uh, picked up a shovel, picked up uh, debris from our parks. Uh, it was amazing. The, the, the borough president himself had Meaningful Mondays and everyone came out with either fraternity organizations or community organizations and they were out there helping us in the parks department. Uh, I, I will say that that this year we may be faced again with many with with many um, overuse oversubscription of our parks. But you know what? Our parks are the sanctuary for our communities, and and they are they are so necessary. Uh, so we want to make sure that also the community understands this is their parks, but we need you to take care of them. So in April we're going to be launching again uh, an anti litter campaign. We're going to be creating corrals in, in several parks uh, throughout the borough. Uh, this administration, uh, we have we have a, a plan to be able to get more people involved in, in all the things that we do. Um, I could stay talking here for hours uh, to for each and every one of you uh, that have been such a part, they have taught me so much. I know the Bronx uh, Council of Environmental Quality has taught me so much and I've learned so much from them. Uh, Nilka, everyone that has been part of it. So I want to say thank you. I wanna thank our elected officials uh, for always being a part of everything that we do in the borough and the many organizations uh, that are out there. So as your borough commissioner for parks that I manage 7,000 acres of parkland, I say thank you, bless you, and I wish you all the very best. Thank you. 
Thank you, Miss Iris Rodriguez Rosa. I didn't know you have two last names like me. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I want to thank you so much to our Assemblywoman, Natalia Fernandez, and our Councilwoman, Vanessa Gibson. You both did a wonderful job in this forum, and we wish you good luck on your, on your, on this <laughs> endeavor. <laughs> so thank you so much. It has been wonderful to have both you here. And I understand we have an artist uh, with us. His name is, or I I'm not sure, no one talked to me about this, but the name is Parker. And Parker will give us um, some, will we'll talk to us or give us some, something for us to go away with. Parker, oh yeah, he, he's, he's a musician. <laughs> <laughs> he's a musician. Parker, thank you so much for being here and please, Take it. Yes, I wanted to uh, join the candidates forum. I want to be the candidate for the minstrel. And this is a song I composed for the Speak Up called Speak Up for Your Park. You got to speak up for your park. That's what you've got to do. If you neglect and don't expect the park to be there for you. If you want to leave a legacy, if you want to make your mark, if you want to do good for the neighborhood, speak up for your part. Now I came up in the boogie down Bronx, they call it Kingsbridge Heights. By the age of three, mom was showing me all four four parks delights. My focus went no further than the leaves beneath my shoes. All different sizes, and shapes, in and rainbow colors and hues. The swings, and in the summertime, the sprinkler was on, no doubt. And I really dug not hockey when the parking would break it out. It added up to what became an inspiration spark. But I was too young to have a tongue to speak up for my part. You gotta speak up for your part. That's what you gotta do. If you neglect, then don't expect the park to be there for you. If you wanna leave a legacy, if you wanna make your mark, if you wanna do good for the neighborhood, speak up for your park. When I got a little bit older, to the pigeon park I went. I just a few girls behind the trees, but always with their consent. It wasn't the only attraction, and I got into sports. I wore out plenty of truck tailors running up and down the basketball courts. I had to personalize them, barring shoelaces for me. And you would call a foul on yourself out of basic courtesy. We all could play the whole darn day, only quitting when it got dark. And I was starting to grasp the need to speak up for my part. You gotta speak up for your part. That's what you gotta do. If you neglect, don't expect the part to be there for you. If you want to leave a legacy, if you want to make your mark. If you want to do good for the neighborhood, speak up for your part. Acorns for squirrels and squirrels for hawks. That's the way the food web rolls. And you better believe that we're a part of it, along with the mice and the moles. So be thankful that mosquitoes are a dragonfly's favorite meal. They scarf them in the water and in the air. It's their predatory deal. Let's put in some helpful plants along the garden trail. Milkweed for the monarchs, fennel for the small tail. To make a place for them to grow in our urban Noah's Ark. So they will be included when we speak up for the park. You gotta speak up for your park. That's what you gotta do. If you neglect, then don't expect the park to be there for you. If you want to leave a legacy, if you want to make your mark, if you want to do good for the neighborhood, speak up for your park. 
And if I may be so bold, I'm not too old to spit a decent flow. Just think Bronx River, Tibbetts Brook, and you'll be in the know. You can bet your boots if we dig the roots. There's people to enlist. All the Bronx celebrities now tell me if there's any I missed. Sonia Sotomayor sits on the highest bench. Comedian Mr. Robert Klein is just about the ultimate bench. And gangsters can change behavior. Fat Joe is no longer so fat. Jenny from the block who rides a six can really go to bat. Kemba Walker, Clotter D.B., commentary chats. Let's get them to throw in with us some celebrity razzmatazz. You gotta speak up for your part. That's what you gotta do. If you neglect then don't expect the park to be there for you. If you want to leave the legacy, if you want to make your mark. If you want to do good for the neighborhood, speak up for your park. You gotta speak up for your park. That's what you gotta do. If you neglect them, don't expect the park to be there for you. If you want to leave a legacy, if you want to make your mark, if you want to do good for the neighborhood, speak up for your part. Speak up for your part. Speak up. Wow, what a great song, Parker. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Parker. That's a great song, Parker. I understand that we have time for a closing remarks from our candidates. So since we started with Natalia, maybe I don't know if you want to toss it up or we, however you guys want to, I will call who wants to start, Natalia, Miss Assemblywoman or Miss Councilwoman? I don't mind. You don't mind. Thank you so much. You have some closing remarks? Yes. Um, thank you so much to everybody in this room listening in on Facebook and the participants here and the organizers of this very important conversation. As we've been saying here today many times, our parks are so important to the structure of our communities, to the structure of our lives, to our peace of minds, to the beauty and, and health of our city. So it's really important that as the next borough president, that the next administration, the next mayor, anybody that has a, a piece of the power to make sure that we are getting the support that we needed puts our parks in the forefront. And, and we need to continue to fight for further education to support our community groups, to support the needs that come out every single day from advocacy, from members of our community, and to really make sure that we're doing all that we can to help our green space. This is the only planet we got left. This is right now the parks that we have uh, to, uh, to live with, and we need to preserve them as best as possible. So thank you so much. I'm Natalia Fernandez. I look forward to continue talking with everyone here. I did put my website in the chat. Please follow along. Please ask the questions. Please let me know what you want to see in your borough. This is yours, and we will make sure that it works for all Bronx sites, all that all Bronx sites are heard, all Bronx sites are seen, and we are all served. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Natalia. Please, Vanessa, your closing remarks. Thank you so much again, Annalise. You did a great job moderating today. God bless you. And really to everyone, to our borough commissioner, to Karen, to Joyce, Chauncey, Dart, Nilka, BCEQ, to Bronx Parks, to all of our advocacy groups that we've worked with over the years. We appreciate you for all that you've done, for all that you stand for, and being champions on behalf of not just our parks and open spaces, but being champions on behalf of our people. We have an exciting opportunity in the next few months in June to elect the next leader of this great borough, a leader who is a champion for parks, but also a champion for all of the other important components of our lives that we fundamentally believe in. Access to affordable housing, quality schools, accessible healthcare, open parks and spaces, dedicated bus lanes and dedicated bike lanes, keeping pedestrians and cyclists safe, investing in so much of our waterfront, like the Harlem River, looking at our step streets, creating opportunities for health and wellness and stability and investment in our beautiful beloved borough. We can have all of that as we move forward as a borough. We realize that COVID-19, this global pandemic that has taken the lives of 500,000 Americans, 
thousands of Bronx sites right here in the Bronx, the highest death rate to COVID. It is a setback, but I am reminded that a setback is preparation for a comeback. We have an opportunity to come back more vibrant, stronger, and healthier than ever before. The only way we do that is by exercising our voices, our votes at the ballot, and making sure that we elect another leader to take on the great work that Ruben Diaz Jr. has done and carry on a lot of legacy projects, like the renovation of Orchard Beach, like the Bronx Children's Museum that will finally open. We can have all of these things. We need a champion, someone who understands the soaring unemployment, the food insecurity that we've been facing, and the need to really invest in our open parks and our spaces. And I am a candidate that is ready, willing, and able to do the work. I don't need on-the-job training. I have a work record and a track record of great things we've done over the years. And I know it has not been easy, but none of you have ever given up on the possibilities. And for that, we are grateful. So we have to keep pushing on. We have to keep pressing on because there is so much optimism. And so many of our residents don't see the work we're doing. They have lost hope. We have to give them back that hope so that they understand all the potential we have here in the Bronx. I'm excited at what lies ahead because I realize that all of us are in this together. United we stand and divided we fall. We share more in common than we do that divides us. Whether it's our beautiful Roberto Clemente State Park, Pelham Bay Park, Van Cortlandt Park, Pelham Parkway, High Bridge, all of the parks we represent from Claremont, Joyce Kilmer, we have We apologize, the, uh, uh, council member, but we need to go to the next forum. We appreciate your time here, council member, uh, councilwoman Vanessa Gibson, and we appreciate the time with the, our assemblywoman, Natalia Fernandez. Thank you so much. And now we are going to the next forum. And I understand we have two candidates for this forum, but before we start candidates, we have interpretation to Spanish, and I'm gonna allow the, the inter, interpreters to talk to us. Tenemos interpretación al español. Por favor, inter, uh, traductores. Where are my translators? <laughs> okay. Oops. Okay, so I think at this point, you're gonna. I think that you show, we're showing our parks platform. The platform is not moving uh, and you, someone is showing some, we should be showing something else, I believe. Could we, uh, my technical assistance, could we show please? Okay, we have it there. For our candidates, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your patience. We are showing right now our platform. We will gonna start in a second. And if my translators want to speak and uh, talk about the instruction for translations, we will, we, will, we will be listening from them. If not, I will start with the forum. Um, so our translators won't be able to exit the translation mode. So. Okay. Um, if you are, we are translating into Spanish. Um, so I don't know, Annalise, if you can direct folks to the interpretation button at the bottom of the Zoom screen or possibly in the more section. Um, if you could do that in, in Espanol, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. I will. Mientras eh, enseñamos la plataforma de, de parques de BCEQ. Queremos decirle que tenemos traducción al español y usted puede encontrar la traducción en el español en, face, uh, en, en el enlace que le ponemos en Facebook o al final de la pantalla. Por favor, déjenos saber y acuérdese que si usted tiene preguntas para los candidatos, póngalo en, el, en la sección de Q&A. Ok, la interpretación. Como pueden ver, la interpretación, se, pueden accesar la, a la interpretación donde ven la, la manita. Ok. So. While we see the, while we see the, 
the parks platform, I just want to say thank you so much candidates for being here with us. My name is Anna Liz Figueroa Garcia, and I have been a Bronx resident living in the Hybrid neighborhood for 15 years. While the Bronx is, the, is known as the greenest bureau and has the largest percentage of park acreage of any bureau in New York City, many Bronx residents, someone needs to mute please, Bronx residents do not have access to park nearby or the nearby park is inaccessible. As part of our Bronx Park Speak Up, our vision is to provide all Bronxonite access to the park and develop network of safe connections between existing parks. We are hosting this candidate forum to bring attention to equitable funding for parks in the Bronx. Someone needs to mute, please. If, you're, you, if you have, thank you so much. Now I'm going to go over quickly over the guidelines for the, for the forum candidates. Please be aware that this is a webinar and your mic will be open so you will be able to mute and unmute yourself. Please be mindful of your time and keep to any other rules we have established. We're gonna mute you and I will apologize for that, but we want to keep this going. The program is a five minutes introduction for each. When I call you, please introduce yourself and talk about parks issue. The time manager, the time manager will use a green car and at one minute, yellow car or screen at 30 seconds and red at 10 seconds reminding. When the colors go off the screen, we may mute you. The second part of the program will be a Q&A from the panel. It, if time and if time allowed, from the public attending our Facebook streaming, we're gonna ask questions. You will have a minute to answer. The timer will use a green screen at 30 seconds and red screen at 10, 10 seconds reminding. Time is really tight, so please go. If you go over the time, we, reserve, we, we reserve the right to mute you. We don't want to do that. For our participants in Facebook, and please remember, we want you to ask questions. Please take this time to put your full name, email, and know if you are part of a community group. Jose San Joseph Sanchez will be moderating our chat. Chat is for networking, our Zoom chat or, or the Q&A questions. Chat is for networking. Please be respectful and do not engage in attacks or any other things like that. Um, and please ask questions about parks. Participants that post anything offensive may be removed from the event at discretion of the chat moderator. Now we will go to our candidates, since you're here for our candidates, I want to introduce, and I'm sorry, I think I'm trying to do my best in pronouncing names, but English is not my first language. We're gonna go to Catherine Garcia. Please, Ms. Garcia, introduce yourself. Thank you so much for having me. So I'm Catherine Garcia. I'm running for New York City Mayor. I apologize that I am out but I was at a rally to support uh, Asian Americans who have been the subject of so many hate crimes. But I am a born and bred Brooklynite. I hope the Bronx will forgive me. I was educated in our public schools who grew up with my four brothers and sisters. And we were able to live a middle-class life that was affordable to two parents who were civil servants. That is what I wanna see for all New Yorkers. But I also wanna make sure that we are opening up all of our parks and creating greenways. Not only does this help with climate change, but this also helps with our public health. It keeps our lungs cleaner. We know that air quality has changed when we are in green space. We know our physical health has changed when we are in green spaces. We know that our mental health has changed when we are in green spaces. And that is why I'm running for mayor. 
because I want to see all of our families thrive in New York City. And I know the Bronx has some of the most beautiful parks, some of the most interesting parks from Barretto to Van Cortland, but we need those interconnections between them so that everyone has access to those wonderful spaces. And during the pandemic, it became clear that parks were infrastructure, that they were critical to everything that we could do because it was the only place that we could go during the pandemic. And so you may not have known me before this Zoom, but you knew my work. I had been responsible for delivering clean water and making sure that our harbor and sewers were, were clean. I was responsible for picking up garbage and I was responsible for plowing snow. And during COVID, I was responsible for delivering 130 million meals, half of which went to the Bronx because we couldn't let any New Yorker go hun hungry. We need to open up our economy by keeping fundamental city services working. So one of my first jobs will be to put back that money so harshly cut from the parks budget, the $80 million, because we can't have parks that are dirty and that are unusable. That just doesn't work. And I'm running because I'm ready to lead you to a better tomorrow in the greatest city in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Catherine Garcia. And also we have Abby Collin, please introduce yourself. Hi, so my name is Eddie Cullen, and I am actually uh, born and bred from the Bronx. It's great to see you, Catherine. It's great to see uh, everyone else here on the forum. I was born on 231st and Kingsbridge Avenue in the Bronx and spent a lot of my time in childhood in Van Cortland Park. So I'm very excited to, to be here and talk to you about my background and who I am. Uh, I was born to a pretty large family, my grandfather and his seven brothers. Uh, and actually there were 19 of them. Uh, all eight of them fought in World War II and they all survived. And they all grew up on 231st and Kingsbridge right, on, uh, right next to Van Cortland. So we've been around for about 200 years near the Van Cortland area. And my whole family has been around here for a really, really, really long time. Uh, I went to Fordham University. I uh, graduated with a degree in economics, philosophy, and Latin. I did the Jesuit Volunteer Corps where I graduated, uh, where I spent a year volunteering with the homeless, teaching high school, and lived on $85 a month. And for the last 10 years, I've been in the technology entrepreneurship world, and I've also been uh, working as an educator. So currently, I'm actually a visiting scholar at Purdue University. So I lead a consortium of 250 mechanical engineers within climate engineering, environmental engineering, uh, and do a lot of day-to-day -day work actually on the United States-Mexico border. Uh, so we're building a 1,989-mile energy corridor uh, where we're trying to reimagine work for immigration and also reimagine work uh, for the American workforce. So I was shocked into action last summer. Uh, I just saw too many things that were happening to my community. And uh, my father uh, actually, unfortunately, two years ago, passed away on Christmas in uh, on 239th and Blackstone Avenue here in the Bronx. So I think he would have told me to step up and do something about what was going on. Uh, so I decided to run for mayor and I decided to, to, to really use